So let's go ahead and start the final part. Now, in this piece, what I want to focus on is the idea of projection and go a little bit beyond often what happens when I do this. I've emphasized now very extensively this idea of diagonalizing the matrix and changing the basis and what it does to the matrix. And often what gets lost, I've discovered in the past, is what happens to all of our other operators and vectors. So let's look at that a bit. So again, we're still in our apple and orange two-dimensional vector space, which we can think of as basis vector 1 and 2 and our column vector 1, 0, 0, 1. And let's just pick some arbitrary vector. I'm going to pick minus 1 over root 2 apples plus 7 over root 2 oranges. Of course, the challenge here is to find uh, 1 over root 2 of an apple. That's a little precise, I realize. Uh, but you, know, you can approximate it. Uh, I don't know whether you count the core or not. And now let's consider some operation M. And we're going to take M acting on A gives us two oranges. And M acting on O gives us negative three apples plus one orange. So what I'd like you to do is let's write V as a column vector and M as a matrix. And I actually want you for practice to briefly, quickly go through computing your matrix elements. And having computed those, then fill in the matrix for M. So I've given you V, I've given you M, as we would define it in terms of kets. Now I want you to turn V into a column vector and M into a two by two matrix and explicitly compute the matrix elements for yourself, just as a quick practice. And then make sure it makes sense, because what, what should be the first column here? What should be the first column? What M does to, and what is M done to A? So two O's, so how many A's? Zero, two. And what does M do to O? Negative three, one. So you should get zero, two, negative three, one, but do it this way and see if you're operating these correctly. Okay, hopefully you got through at least a couple of these. Um, let's just look at them real quickly. I'll do the first one. So M times A we know is 2O, but A times O is what? Zero. M times O is going to be the minus 3A plus O, but what is the only one that's going to survive multiplication by A? The A? Is the A time. So we really only need to keep track of that, so that's minus 3. M times A is 2O. O and O is OK, so that's 2. M times O is the minus 3A plus O. We need the O1, which is 1. Notice what this is doing for us. Right? If, we, if we think about the matrix elements, I, M, J, that's our row, and that's, no, I'm sorry. I just said it backwards, didn't I? Yeah. That's our column, and that's our row. No, I had it right the first time. I hate IJ notation <laughs> in terms of rows and columns. I always get in the right place, but I always get the wrong name. So these two are our first row. 0 minus 3, because that's column 1, that's column 2. And then these two are giving us our second row, first column, second column. And notice it's exactly what we said. What happens to A ends up in the first column, and it's the first and second element of that row. And so everything works out. What about V? Well, V is the easy one in a sense. I just put the A in the first row 
and the O in the second row. But keep in mind, what we're doing with V is the same idea of projection. Okay. So V is some number A times A plus some number B times O. If I want to write it as a column vector, just like with the matrix notation, the elements really are AV and OV, the projections. And this is a common thing we're going to use because we're going to have things like the following. V is the sum over J, A sub J, J, where J might even be an infinite basis. And I want the ith component of V. So to do that, I will project out with I, which if we notice is the sum over J of A, J, I, J. But what is I, J? Zero except when J is black. So we call that the Kronecker delta. So this is A, J, delta I, J, dropping our sum, which is A, I. Notice actually, I, I don't need an I there. I need the I. Here, the ith component of the vector v is i projected onto v, which is a sub i. Again, when I first saw this the first couple times, I really thought, okay, why, why are we bothering with all this? This seems kind of trivial-ish, right? I did a whole bunch of extra math to get that v i is a sub i. But trust me. This idea of keeping in mind that when you want the i-th component you project becomes incredibly powerful as we go on. Now, we can see this in another way. If we want to take v and now change to our plus minus basis, where plus is 1, 0 and minus is 0, 1, Keeping in mind what plus and minus were, they were the eigenvectors, the eigenvectors of one of zero, one, one, zero, that operator P. Well, if you remember, our rule is that C inverse acting on V will change the basis. And if you do this math, you will now see why I picked all the root twos. I get 3, 4. Notice this is one of the weird times we, we have a strange mathematical use of equals. This is showing two quantities that are the same in two different bases. Everything on this side of the equation is written in the A0 basis. This side of the equation is written in the plus minus basis. So it's almost like we need a new equal sign. So there are two types of matrix multiplications you come across when doing quantum mechanics, when doing linear algebra. There is transforming a vector into a different vector, which we are not doing here, right? And there is the change of basis equation. And unfortunately, we use the same equal signs for both. And in matrix column notation, there is no way to tell that you just did that, right? There is no indication that this 3, 4, whether it's in a new basis or whether it's a new vector, unless you knew what you were doing from back here. And that's critical to keep in mind and keep track of. Now, let's just do a couple of different things because I find these useful exercises for, I don't know, internalizing this idea. The first thing is we should check that what we said is true. So if I now convert to bras and cats, 
That's what 3, 4 represents, right? 3 times plus, plus 4 times minus. A change of basis can also just be executed by literally writing what plus is in bras and cats. Whoops. And writing what minus is. And now this is pretty straightforward math to work out. I've got 3 over root 2 minus 4 over root 2 times a plus 3 over root 2 plus 4 over root 2 times o, which lo and behold is how I wrote v in my a and o basis. So indeed, 3, 4 and minus 1 over root 2, 7 over root 2 are the same vector in two different bases. Any questions on that? Now, the other piece is to see what we really mean by projection. Right? We decided if I want the component of v in the plus direction, I project with the plus vector. So let's do that. The plus vector is 1 over root 2 a plus o. So this is plus and this is v. And now it's very clear I mean, I don't even, in a sense, have to worry about what basis I'm working in. I'm just working in kets that have a defined scalar product. I know what OA and AO are and AA and all of that. So I can write it out. AA survives, OO survives, but any AO or OA equals 0. And so I get a minus 1 over 2 from the first plus a 7 over 2, which equals 6 over 2, which equals 3. Well, it doesn't equal 3v. I, my check looked like a v. I'll erase it. And if you do the same, I, I encourage you to do it as an exercise. If you do the same for minus on v, you will get 4. That looked like 4 factorial. Well, we have to be careful with our <laughs> excitement. And now, if I wanted to write this in the plus minus basis, I know my components 3 and 4. So an important question you might want to ask yourself is, when do I use projection and when do I use uh, the change of basis matrix? And my suggestion to you, for instance, if you just need a single component, projection is usually easier because it's obvious, right? If I have the vector v and I have some other vector q, that I want the component in that direction, I just project. If I know I'm going to be having to transform lots of vectors into the new basis, then I'm going to construct my matrix that corresponds to the change of basis and use that to change all the matrices, I mean all the vectors that I want. So a lot depends what you're doing. The projection, I think, is always the most straightforward. It's the easiest. There's very little that can go wrong. Um, in computing the matrix, you have to remember, am I doing C, am I doing C inverse? You know, are the eigenvectors normalized? I mean, there's a lot that goes into getting C correct. So if all you're trying to do is get one component, one projection, this might be the safer way to do it. But if you're having to do a lot over and over, if you just compute the matrix once, then the matrix column multiplication is usually easier. Make sense? Now, I want to close with a few comments about we had M up here. M is kind of an interesting matrix. Right, so M itself 
is 0 minus 3 to 1. That's in my A, O basis. What is M going to look like in my plus minus basis? Hard to guess. I'm not expecting you to guess here, but what am I going to do? No. I'm not going to use its eigenvalues. How do I change from the AO to the plus minus vector? Plus minus were eigenvectors of P, not of M. Well, it turns out, I've said it before, but I knew it would have gotten lost. The, the concept of C inverse MC, that's how we change any matrix into the new basis, not just P, right? C inverse P times C was the change of basis, and P turns out diagonal. But it's also the way we change any other matrix into our new basis. So you just do that multiplication out, and if you do it out, Interestingly enough, you get 0, minus 2, 3, 1, if I did it correctly. Now, one thing we can check is, if you look back up here, we were told m takes a to 2o, and m takes o to minus 3a plus o. This form, right, is telling me that we are taking plus to 3 minus. How do I know that? If I call this m prime, right, m prime times 1, 0 is 0, 3. That took plus to 3 times minus. Because remember, minus in my new basis is 0, 1. So 0 times 3 is 3 minus. So m, times, m prime times 1, 0, 1, 0 is plus, takes me to 3 minus. So I now know m does something simple to the plus and minus vectors. And if we look at it over here, okay, plus is 1 over root 2, a plus o. Okay, well, what happens to a? Right, so under, so m acting on plus has to take a to 2o, and what's it going to take o to? Minus 3a plus o. So m acting on plus gives me this, which is 1 over root 2 times what? Minus 3a plus 3o, which is 3 times what? Oh, minus. minus. So m acting on plus, right? The prime here is just to let me know I was in a different basis. But m acting on plus does indeed take me to 3 minus, whether I work in my a's and o basis or whether I work in my new basis. So at least that column was correct. And you can check. Right, what it's saying it does to O is it takes it to minus 2, 1. Well, O, right, is that, no, what it does to minus, I'm sorry, is take it to minus 2, 1. And so if you go through the same exercise for minus, you can see how that's going to probably work out if you look at this. It's a little more complicated. Um, because it has both the A's and the O's, and you have to go through it carefully. The final piece, notice M is not diagonal in the new basis. The final piece that we're going to work on on Thursday is why we worry about the commutator. I said it in lecture, but it's easy to get lost. So that's why we're going to do a problem. If this is true, if they commute, then A and B have the same eigenvectors, or at least you could make them the same. Sometimes you have to do linear combinations to make it work, but they have the same eigenvectors. So what does that mean about being diagonal? If I change to the basis of eigenvectors, what will both of these be? 
They're not going to be the same because they might have different eigenvalues. So they're not going to be the same, but they're both going to be what? Diagonal. They're both going to be diagonal. So here we did a change of basis and M, because it doesn't commute with P, doesn't end up diagonal because it has different eigenvectors. But if they happen to have been ones that commuted, they would have ended up the same. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. And like I said, we're going to work on that Thursday. So we'll end there.